reference my paws and uh, to a degree I'm just another animal out here on the Arctic uh, I'm not another human I'm, I'm one of the animals trying to survive I am a food group I'm not top of the food chain so every day every morning every night I've got to look for predators I'm fully aware in my mind I live in their territory they do not live in mine there's more stuff that wants to eat me than I want to be eaten by out here. It's always a challenge just staying alive day to day. And as we go along, we develop our ideas and we go with the best ones that we have. That's always the plan. This is one of the roadhouses. It's a public shelter cabin. And uh, we make ourselves comfortable here and we leave things behind to make other people comfortable. And Starbucks. Thank you for my Starbucks. I was going to hide in here real quickly. <laughs> We really enjoy coming up here. Every year we make an effort to improve the place as best we can for our comfort and other people. A lot of other people come up here and hunt, and uh, we're in a very productive area. We feel safe. This is like our insurance when we're working these mountains back here. We know we can get back to this place, or even if we're walking or broken down, and we know we'll be safe here. And this is a good place if we ever have to wait. We have to wait for weather. We have to wait for things to be fixed, wait to be picked up. When we dress up to go out in the Arctic, we really dress up. If you've got snow going down your neck, you have to take the time to chill a little bit down to change yourself out. If you've got one boot wet, take the time. You just have to take the time. A lot of people don't realize how much time things take up here. And then, it, then again, it takes time to get things here, so we're all masters of repair, improvisation. And I always tell them, if I ain't got it, I don't need it. I kind of sort of got it all together, too. this area because this is where the western arctic caribou herd winters it's 325,000 strong and there's traditional caribou hunting grounds back here my plan for today let's go to that mountain over there 
are all those caribou are covering the hillsides and work among them. Maybe my wife will get a couple caribou and we'll leave the guts and the hides in a pile. Maybe set a trap nearby and we'll take the meats back here and we'll butcher them down nice and compact and we'll work up a load of meats. If not today, then there's tomorrow and the next day. We'll just keep doing the same deal. It's coming. I see maybe a thousand caribou. They're just like salt and pepper. They're like pepper all over the salt. There's a lot of caribou up there. The prospects are pretty good, man. What do you think, Agnes? You want to go? Are you ready to shoot? You got your ammo? Yep. Ready to go. There's a lot of self-reliance living out this far. You do whatever you want with your life. This is the lifestyle I choose to live. It's not the right or wrong way to live. It's just the way I choose. I live in one of the most remote parts of Alaska. There's very few people in this region. I don't live in a village that has any kind of municipality. We don't have a power plant. So because of all those factors, so I have to make my own power. Spending a little bit of money and buying solar panels are very expensive up front, but in the end, where you don't have to continuously run a generator, you actually save a lot of money. The light spectrum that we have here in spring is so intense and so long, I don't have to run my generator at all. I'm able to power everything in my home with these three panels. It saves me time. I don't need to come out and start my generator. I don't need to pump fuel. I don't need to buy fuel. A lot of time and money is saved with these three panels. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and check the uh, fluid level in all my batteries. First one's good. If any of these batteries get shot, it's like the old expression, only as strong as the weakest link. My whole bank will go down and it can damage my whole system, so you gotta keep up on checking them. I'm saving and storing power in that battery bank. So when it's dark, I have enough stored power that I can run my lights, radio, telephone, all those things I can run in my home. It's all about planning to head out here. You're always thinking about tomorrow, the next day, the next week, what you're gonna need, being prepared for. Just another 
day on Taylor Highway. It never fails. There's always, there's always something here. We're heading down into the 40 mile valley now. This would be a bad place to go off the road. It's uh, pretty much a 40 degree angle off the left bank here. So if you make a mistake on this section of the road, you might as well kiss whatever you got. Goodbye. Look at some arrow up in here. It's about a lane and a half wide. Need a damn bicycle to come through here if it gets too much more narrow. Come on, buddy. Slow it down. Slow it down. These truck drivers, they're, they're used to having the whole road to themselves, and uh, they don't like to slow down. For someone like me who doesn't drive a lot, it scares the hell out of me. stretch coming down the hill into Eagle now. That's a good feeling. All in all, it went pretty good. I'm feeling really good. I've been watching the river conditions now. After discussion with Kate, we've decided we're going to leave our sawmill in Eagle this year instead of trying to get it down river before the ice breaks up. This is the end of the road for this spring for this sawmill, and I'll have to deal with it later on in the summertime. Now all I got to do is pack up the snow machine, another hour trip home on the Yukon, jump in the sauna, drink some beer, snuggle with Kate, and it's a good day. I got I to gotta keep my little peepers peeled. I got grandkids that want me to take them to see the mouse someday. I got to stay alive to do it. situation but not checkmate yet
here in the in the Arctic, you know, everything's about efficiency. You don't really put in any extra effort or use any resources unless you have to. In the winter time, I do extensive trapping for supplemental income. I have a lot of respect for all the animals that live here in the Brooks Range, and they're essential to my life as a subsistence user. Animals can be used to make mitts or parka ruffs or hats, and they can also be sold. Different animals' hides are worth different amounts of money. For instance, a fox hide is worth anywhere from $50 to $100. A wolverine is worth anywhere from $250 to $500. A wolf hide is worth $1,500. I'm going to head up the creek and check my trap line, tend any traps that need, rebaiting. If I see some more sign, I'm going to put out a couple more wolverine cubbies. I've been seeing a good amount of wolverine sign this winter, and uh, hopefully we'll catch something or we'll rebait and catch something next time we get out there. It's very important to check your traps frequently on your trap line. For one reason, you have that obligation to the animals. I don't want the animals to be in the trap any longer than they have to before I go and humanely dispatch them. Also, you'll lose animals. Other animals will come and eat them in the trap, or snow and ice will clog your traps. It'll freeze them open, and then your traps aren't effective, so you're wasting your time anyway. There's a grouse. A spruce grouse is basically an arctic chicken. I need at least two to make a meal. There's a grouse. I was just coming around the corner and I caught a little movement out of the corner of my eye. Saw one spruce grouse and shot it and a little supper. Rural Alaska, most people do their bird hunting with a 22 rifle or pistol like I just did. And it's, uh, it's not so much a sport, it's just a, a kill of opportunity and a little bit of food. So. Looking to see if I get him too. Got him. Bonus along the trail. I shot a couple spruce grouse and third one that flew in the trees over here. I'm gonna walk over there and see if I can't find him and, and get the fourth one there. And... He flew right over here. shooting those grouse when I left home today, but always have the 22 with me and seize opportunity when you get it. At least I'm not coming home empty-handed. Good deal. Things don't always go as you plan. That's the way it is out here. You gotta adapt to things as they happen. Yeah. Out here, when things break down, it's up to me to fix them. The next thing I need to do is work on my Bombi. I use a Bombi for a lot of different jobs around here. I haven't found anything it can't pull yet. Boats, logs, little buildings. You know, for something that weighs about 3,400 pounds, it's a mighty mite. It's a track vehicle, kind of like a bulldozer. Where we live here, it's mostly permafrosted country. And when that does start to thaw out in the springtime, it's very, very wet and soft. This is about the only thing I can use in my yard without tearing everything up because it's got a lot of flotation. So it's a very important tool for me to keep operating. Hey, you give me a hand? Yep. All right. I was having problems with these wheels not being aligned straight and they were throwing the tracks off. 
So I'm removing these axles here so I can clean them all up and check them out and make sure they're not bent. Okay, you're on it? I'm on it. Oh, that's good. That's real easy. It's coming out easy? Yeah. Woohoo! Okay. All right, now go back about a foot and a half. You'll see another one there. It's actually Kate's Bombie. We were driving along in Fairbanks and I saw this for sale and I thought it was the cutest little thing, so I bought it. You know, it's sad that the axle's not cooperating, but I'm sure Andy can fix it. That's it? I think so. I didn't know we had these. Well, you always told me you like a man with a big tool. <laughs> I think you are a big tool. All four axles are off now. Hopefully I'll be able to get this thing going in another day or so. It's just a matter of uh, what you want and the things you want in life. And this is what we like. This is what we want in life. We like the action. We like the good food. That's the way we like to do it. I just want to glass around and make myself familiar with all the little dots all over again. And then I'll be able to tell what's moving and what's not. Well, there's caribou moving down here. Caribou are always walking. They're always on the move every day. And when you get them running like that, there's almost guaranteed something spooking them. I just don't see what's spooking them. And it isn't the first herd that we've seen running off that hill either. I've seen about four other small herds run off that hill for some reason. They're probably a good mile and a half away, almost two miles away. So it's definitely not us. Quite a few bunches of caribou. Keep words and keep going up on top and glass around some more once we get to the top. This is a place we call On High. This is a natural kind of caribou trap. The caribou take these three drainages and they end up in this area right here. And a lot of times we can hunt them from the rocks. We just dress like a rock, look like a rock, act like a rock. And we get really close to caribou. We've got, right here is a one lone female. Look, they're coming up this way. This one's are spooky. They're gonna start moving. That first one right there? The very first one. Look, she's the fourth one back now. The one that just turned around is a female. And there's two bulls and a female. There's two bulls and a female. Good drop. You see her drop? He's bind her ass. She'll go down finish her, she'll die. I just shot a female caribou. Looked like she's uh, down. I was aiming for her um, shoulder, right? Try to get a quick heart shot, but uh, looked like I hit it in the spine and it just went and fell down with the first shot. Should we go down finish her? For sure. I'm gonna go up and get my machine. Okay. There is no schedule, just whatever you want. That's part of the beauty of living in the bush and having those freedoms. Picked up a couple of spruce grouse here. Uh, it was just kind of unexpected. It was going along and there was four grouse. I'll grab my favorite part of any bird or any animal. A 
of heart. Take the, the legs, the breast meat, and the hearts from each one. These grouse, they rely on their, uh, on their natural camouflage of their feathers. And they'll sit still. You can walk right up to them, and they don't, they don't run away. Most of the time, it works. I was hanging around for quite a while with these grouse right next to me. I didn't even see them. Little bonus, little kill of opportunity, and something to bring home on a otherwise unsuccessful trapping mission. Voila. My whole life, I've enjoyed being outdoors. So, you know, I, I have an appreciation for going to a large metropolitan city and eating a good meal, but I like to hang my hat in the, in the wilderness. I, I like rural living. Hungry. It's like midnight. Got more work to do. <clears throat> Everything in life is a matter of perspective, and I'm learning not knowing. Some people are... They think it's incredible the way that I live or different other people who live in this region. To me, it's just everyday stuff. Well, this is kind of my uh, quick meal version of shepherd's pie. I got potatoes with meat, grouse, cheese on the top. It's not the greatest meal I ever cooked, but I just need something to eat. I'm just going to devour it. Experience is knowledge out here, and you only gain that knowledge if you gain the experience, and that just takes time. And even then, you screw up. There were six of these. I six. Now there should be eight. I'm missing two of these long ones. When I took the Bombi apart and I started inspecting all the parts and pieces on it, I found that some bolts got lost. Where would you have put them? In their pocket? No. Okay, I'm looking for the big baby. It's gotta be a real pain. You can't put it together if you can't get anything to put it together with. It's just a magnet that holds tools on a wall, but they're wicked for looking stuff in the snow. Like, you just go over the snow and it just jumps up into the magnet. Let's check it out. I'm having problems with the alignment on the axles. I pulled this one axle off and it's the alignment's messed up on it. It's not uh, straight, so because it's cocked, the bogey wheel here is grabbing the track and throwing the track off. And once the track comes off, then it's about a half a day project to put my track back on. I'm going to inspect them all and clean them up. And one way or another, I've got to make it work. So I got a feeling it's going to be more MacGyvering. There are some days I feel like all I'm doing is fixing things, but the more things you have to do out of the ordinary, the more skills you develop. So a lot of times when a problem happens, it's just a matter of a minute or two and I know how to fix the problem. success looking through his pockets. Well, I guess I better go deliver the bad news. So sorry. Can't find anything? No, all that's out there is just those little ones with the washers. Okay, I'll figure it out. Out here, it seems like I'm forever redoing threads or making my own nuts or bolts. It's a pain in the ass. More damn MacGyvering. Do I want to shoot everything in sight? No. Do I need to rid myself of a top predator? Absolutely. No different than anybody else's home protection. 
My street gangs just have fur and claws. This Wolverine predator situation is, is kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. I have too much work to do to be held hostage by a furball. It's time for me, instead of waiting for him to come in, I've got a beautiful, nice, warm, sunny day. I've got a Tyvek suit, which is all white. And I'm going to go out to an area where he's popped up from a couple of times. And uh, I I'm going to put the hunt on him. The Wolverine is doing some things that are very uncharacteristic for a Wolverine. You know, predators are opportunists. This is beginning to feel more like uh, he's targeting me. He was by my side of the tent where I sleep when I heard the noise the other night. He is not just, let's open the tent and see if there's food. He is definitely directing his attention at me personally. I am a food group if he needs it. I am a lone individual culling my, I've culled myself from the herd. I do walk with a limp. So all of that says, ooh, there's a pork chop. It will be very offensive to him that I've come and screwed up his den. That is a direct challenge. So I'm going to get right up in his grill and let him know Duke can play this game. This Wolverine predator situation is, is kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. It's time for me to go out and push back and assert my dominance. And, and hopefully in doing that, he'll stay away. You got uh, a couple of very distinctive smaller Wolverine tracks. You know, all these little circles are prints. But because of the light windstorm we had the other night, it's going to leave an uh, inverted print. But this shows me that there are there's a lot of activity here. You know, some are smaller, obviously, fox, some are bigger, obviously, wolverine, but this is home central. So this is a good area for me to take a couple of shots. Even not seeing the wolverine jump in front of me, by me going into their territory, boom, 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 boom. It's a uh, posturing and warning. I'm the alpha. No, I am. No, I am. And then, we'll, you know, we'll either come to a meeting of the minds, one of us comes out the victor, or we both say, fine, I have my territory, you have yours. Small game will get you through the time when there's no big game. And there's plenty of time when there's no big game. You gotta know your alternatives, and you'll always be successful. I just went back up and got the snow machine with the sled. I'm going to go down and go pick up that caribou. The ultimate plan for the animal, of course, is the caribou that we hunted this time of year. She's a nice, fat female, and it's the best meat. They're, they're prime right now. Caribou are good all the way around. I'm skinning away. We've got uh, some antlers and head and some skin for bait. What we're doing here is killing off two birds with one stone. Basically what'll happen is there'll be a gut pile left here with the skin, because the skin at this time of year is just not any good. And um, the ravens will come and they'll eat and they'll let the other predators around here know that there's something up here and the predators will come up here. And um, when we come around tomorrow, we'll be able to sneak up to the same rock, have a look down, maybe be able to take a shot. So this doesn't just pan out in one day. This is just our first good day of um, riding weather. This is our first good day of being able to get out and do what we wanted to do. And we've waited a long time, and it's taken quite a while to get here. And this is just the first the first one of several caribou we plan on having, and the, the first bait that we'll plan on leaving behind. We call them baits, but um, it's just gut piles that we leave behind. But it's really what they become. We're not placing them or something, but um, this is a good place. I threw the skin on there simply to keep the ravens from eating up and clearing off the gut pile over the next couple days. Made ourselves a gut pile.
I made ourselves some meat. Now we're looking to make some fur. The real value of wilderness is, this, is aesthetic, and it's a non-tangible asset. basic building blocks to living out in the wilderness is having fuel, it's having meat to eat. You gotta have a good supply of firewood to get yourself through the winter. This will be some good dry spruce. Some high quality uh, fuel here. I like to be efficient. I burn fuel to come all the way up here to trap. Fuel costs a lot of money in rural Alaska, so I try to make the best of it and cut down a tree, you know, in an area that otherwise would be too far away to, to just to go to to cut firewood. So, in these temperatures, that's a couple of days of wood. So it didn't really cost me anything just to knock this little tree down. Every little bit of wood helps. You can never have too much firewood. I was getting pretty low on wood. That shed at late fall was filled to the top and was heaping over with nice split dried wood ready to go. And at this point, we're down here pretty low, just a couple pieces left. So went up today and cut this tree. We got a little bit of expendable wood now. I'm ahead a couple days. Having an ample supply of firewood is 100% essential. If you don't have enough firewood to make it through the winter, it's, it's not going to be a very good time. There's a lot of different ways of living subsistence. I'm always improvising. you got to find a balance out here. So I've cleaned up all the axles got all the parts ready to put it back on the Bombi, so she's ready to get put back together again. If you don't like doing mechanic and you better, if you're gonna live out in the woods, you better not buy any equipment, because you're gonna be forced to MacGyver a lot of stuff. Out here, the trade-off is the investment you have in this equipment and the amount of work you can do without it. Everybody comes to realize after a while, if you don't have some of this equipment, it's just too much work. Kind of feeling like I'm on the home stretch here, which is a good thing. Often the biggest battle with any of this stuff is doing it in the right order. It's one of the things that my parents taught me in life was just go do it. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. You'll learn. All right. I think for the most part, I got this bad boy back together. It hasn't run for quite a while. Let's see if she'll start up. For the most part, I got this bad boy back together. It hasn't run for quite a while, so that's the next thing. See if she'll start up. All right, looking good. The bomb is just a really important tool to me. It's just an all-purpose vehicle for us during the summertime. It was a bit of a struggle, you know, having to take parts off and find replacements. But I gotta say, everything went back together good. I don't have any spare parts laying around. <laughs> I'm not missing any parts. All in all, I feel like this was a good, good project and uh, a good day today to get this done. change of seasons coming and things happen at a really fast rate. 
every day there's something else to hunt. Every day there's something new to gather. Yesterday Agnes caught a really dandy caribou and we left a gut pile behind. And uh, what we like to do is go back and look at the gut piles. We have one at a pretty strategic place. So our plan is to go on up there and see what fur has gone to that gut pile. See if anything's come along and uh, had a snack or two and then we can track it or watch it. Visibility is pretty limited today though. So we've got our gut pile from yesterday down here from a nice caribou that we killed. And we were glassing to see if any fur would have been on it. Uh, from what we see, there's only been ravens on it so far. So we're going to come back here again tomorrow and have another look. Today it doesn't seem like we're going to be getting out there as much as we want to. The weather's going to be calming down. It's not really the cold, it's the wind. So we're just going to have to sit and wait out the weather. Otherwise, we're absolutely terrible. Um, today is blowing gusting 45 and blowing 30 and it's about zero out there so i think it's something like a 47 degree wind chill factor out of every good hunting day there's probably two days of nasty nasty weather it's the arctic pretty good caribou huh? this is the 3c menu this is the caribou the corn and the carrots with holy bread that you made at home Fly through all this in a pot and call it good. We're gonna just wait out the weather and hope for the best, and it should clear up hopefully by morning, and we should be rolling soon. I've always craved extreme isolation. I like the isolation. I love my animals, even the ones that want to eat me. are back um that means a wolverine isn't uh you know i had the push play uh my dominance over his dominance and uh he's left the area today they is the whole feel is different there is uh, an absolute lessening of the tension in the air and uh things are back to normal you can't get me oh you can't get me you can't catch me Foxes, uh, they are my social world. Come on, dummy dum dum. It's right here. People are 350 miles away. The foxes are their family to me. My favorite thing about the foxes is that they are willing to share the tundra with me. They're allowing me to experience what they are, what they can be. You know, they're not just a fur coat. They're friends. <laughs>